All right, so I uh, got the truck, the rear end lowered. Everything's running and driving great. I've um, been working on tuning the engine because I really don't know what I'm doing, but I'm making progress. Um, so even a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. Anyway, um, next on the list is the rear end. So I want this to be my daily driver. And the problem I have is literally when I am doing 65 miles an hour on the highway, I am running 3,500 RPMs. I know a little small block can handle it, but I want to bring that down. It's a four speed. I don't really use first gear. Uh, when I look at the tab on the back of the differential, it says 355, but all the math says that's not right with a 31 inch height tire. I, I think it's on the website they have the on the webs they have the calculator that you can put in tire size um, gear ratio of the transmission which everything I have seen for a 435 four speed transmission that fourth gear is one to one ratio so I put that in there with the 355 gears doing 65 miles an hour and it's nowhere near 3500 rpms so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start working on the rear end, but I want to just kind of get some information in my head. Uh, first off, I'm going to jack up the rear end, put it on uh, jack stands. Hopefully I can do it with very little clearance um, and uh, take the wheels off, take the drive shaft off, set it in a position where the drive shaft yoke is horizontal and I can keep an eye on it, mark the top of it set up a camera and then spin this wheel in one rotation and count how many times the uh, uh, yoke spins around. So anyway, let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna take the wheels off. I'm gonna jack up the rear, put it on jack stands, take off the uh, drive shaft and do that spin and just see what I get. All right, so I have marked the top of this drum and I marked one on the bracket behind it so I'm going to make one full rotation nice and slowly and keep track half there is one there's a half there is two. There is a half. And there is three. Well, I'll be damned. So that's all the way around, which is 355. One and a half is probably closest to 355 gears. So why am I running so many RPMs? So at this point, I was scratching my head. I mean, if I put in the information on the calculator with 355 gears, 31 inch tire height, and a vehicle speed of 65 miles an hour, I should be doing 2,500 RPMs. Um, well, and this is, that's with a, uh, a one-to-one -one ratio in fourth gear. So I kind of took a moment and said, all right, is all the information I have accurate? And then I started looking at the uh, tack on the truck and I knew they had settings for different uh, cylinder numbers. And, I, and lo and behold, I looked on the back of it and it was set to a six cylinder mode so it wasn't on four cylinder but it was on six cylinder so i was i estimated about 500 rpms difference where it's reading faster so instead of uh, 3500 rpms it was about 3000 rpms so i still wanted to do the 323 gear change because that should bring it down approximately 200 RPMs is what I was guessing. 
Okay. So sorry that was so close. Um, removed the axles and removed the back plate. I don't see anything on here. I mean, this says three eighty three. I don't know if you can read that. Get the light on it. No, because those numbers would be backwards. Um, and then over here, it says five, five, three, oh, five, 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 six, eight. Is that possible? Dana. A three zero three zero one three forty six forty something. I don't know. Um, anywho, uh, I'm going to take this out. Uh, I did make a punch, a single punch here, and two punches on this side, so I know. Um, I take a picture of this, and then they're on the bottom. So I'll know from the picture how this is supposed to go back in. And I have the ring and pinion at 323, but I don't have any of the bearings. So I need to see if there's any issue with these bearings. And then uh, if I do, then I'll just take the part numbers off the bearings and buy the bearings. So that's what I'm doing now. So, um, I, my bearings came in today, um, so the kit comes with the, everything I need, basically. Um, shims, uh, front seal, uh, ring bolts, and then underneath are the, uh, oh, comes with the new uh, nut. But these are, these are the old ones, I just was matching them up. But um, I took apart, I used my Dremel tool and uh, cut notches on the bearing. And as you can see, what seemed to roll fine, it definitely has some pitting and uh, um, got some wear. So glad I'm doing that. So uh, next is to set up something where I can press this off. So I'm going to. We'll rig something up now. Okay, here's what I come up with. Uh, I'm going to use the polar base. It's uh, tied in here. And then I'm going to put it in my press, my little Harbor Freight press, and I'm going to push down here while this is uh, attached to the to the base. This will be underneath, hopefully. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that works. All right, so it didn't fit in my vise. So here's what I'm going with now. Same two parts as before, but this thing had a point, so I didn't want it going into my socket. So I put a piece of plate here and should be able to, you know, if you can see the bit coming off. <laughs> that worked way better than I planned. I thought so it was going to break. Hit me in the head. Give me stitches. The good stuff. All right. So I'm going to do this on the other side. I'm going to make two cuts with the Dremel. Remove this. Remove the bearings. Put that on there and take that off. This side actually looks better. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of pitting. But it's not nearly as bad as the other side was. That side went just as well. Um... Also, keep 
if you're going to do this, keep, you probably already know this, but keep track of the shims that are on each side and label which side goes where so that you can uh, measure them and put the exact same spacing or the exact same shins for that matter. Okay, so this side is ready to go. Um, probably going to clean it up a little bit. There is some booge in there. So uh, I'm going to clean that side up, press the bearings on, and install the ring. And then this side should be good. And on to the pinion. All right, so I got it cleaned up. Um, this is what I'm going to try. I have the old race. Um, that's in opposite direction, and then that same bar, and I should that this will all fit on the press, so I can push it down. Should work. All right, I'm at the press. Got everything set up. Uh, almost forgot to put those washers back in, but luckily I'm slow, and therefore I remembered. All right, so let's give this a shot. I can probably do this one-handed. As parts shoot everywhere. There, straighten out. That's what I like about the press is that, I mean, yeah, you can hit it with a hammer and get it to go in, but this is going in pretty straight. Hopefully it won't bring that spare race back in. And we are pressed. Boom. All right, so I know it's pressed in because I can't spin the little washers. I can see it's closed. Um, but I am going to put that on before I put this on because this little flange is gonna get bent if I don't raise it up. So just a little note. All right, so I got the ring side, I've got my shims, and as I was saying, I have this race in here because I want to make sure that spins, that I'm not touching this thing or bending this as I am pushing this one down. So, let's get her done. Alright, so I got three bolts to suck it up and press it against the, uh, what do you call it, main section. And uh, now I'm going to put red Loctite and uh, go look up the torque specs for them and torque them down. All right, so uh, interwebs said 110 foot-pounds. So as you can see, there's an X. So the first one is to make sure that I had Loctite on it, and then the second one is to show that I torqued it to spec. So I went through each one, torqued it to spec, and I'm out of breath, because that's a lot. Um, also, I did make sure that I can still spin this bearing, so it being in the vise is not impacting the bearings. So uh, this side is ready to go. Uh, I'm going to get some of my rear end lube <laughs> doesn't sound right gear lube and put it in a coffee flat the new Folgers uh, coffee things cut down and I'm just gonna soak it overnight uh, flip it over on the other side soak it on the other side and uh, I think we'll be ready to go so uh, more to come so this is why this is all for entertainment purposes, and you should never do anything I say that's unique in any way. I was sitting here thinking, all right, well, I need to cut this off and figure out how to push this out. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm not reusing this. I'm using this. I just have to press this on, and I'm ready to go. So, uh, I don't know. I don't think there's... There probably is a, I'll have to see if there is a um, washer or something. I know there's some here on this one and I'm gonna have to put them on there. I'm gonna take some measurements too and make sure that, you know, the distance and everything seems legit. Um, 
But yeah, I bet there's something here. I'm going to have to look at that. But I was thinking, man, I didn't even have to touch this. I just got to push this one on and I'm good to go. But maybe not. So further review required. All right. So um, snipped the with the with the the bearing case outer shell from the uh, bearing here it's not too bad there's a little bit of pitting but nothing major um, so I'm going to use the same method where I clamp onto it here and then put an extension I've seen someone on YouTube do that so um, do that now and try to pull this off I'm pretty sure there's a um, going to be a, a spacer under here that I need to measure and see if I have one that size. All right, so here's what my setup looks like. You know, I had to put an extension. I also, I don't know if you guys, you know, use these very much, but I always want to tighten them down. And when I do, this wants to turn this way and this wants to turn that way, which makes these bolts um, not want to stay on here well. And I just realized if you loosen them, this is going to pull them together anyway. You don't have to make, I don't believe you have to make this super tight. Um, it's going to grab just because it's pulling on the outer edge, which is literally going to force it to come in. But we'll see. Uh, let's see if this works. All right, that worked. Um, I was able to get this off. There is no uh, washer on this side. That's interesting. I thought on the eight and three quarter I did. Um, there was one there, but either way. Uh, they they are very similar. Everything looks good. So uh, next is to press this on. Um, I need to find. I think I might have some. I have some exhaust pipe. Now I know this is too short, but I like the way that fits on there. It's not going to harm anything. So if I can find a longer piece of this where I can bring it up to here maybe, then I can put it in the press and push it down. So I uh, need to go rummage through my parts bin. All right, so here's my setup. Um, saddened me that I had to cut that from a long tube, but uh, it was needed. So uh, let's see if this works. That worked just as I had hoped. So um, uh, bearing is pressed. So, um, moving on really, um, just need to install the races, I measure the shims for the front and, uh, measure the resistance as it spins when it's all tightened down, all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, I got shims for the races and these bearings go in and then there's Another one that goes on the other side, and then there's some shims in here. So, yep, moving on. All right, so this escalated quickly. Um, I was getting ready to put in the races for the pinion, and I was having trouble with one that's the right size. This is just a bit too small. To hit the outer race so I did this I took my old race poorly welded it to the plate of steel that I've been using for this entire thing it was actually it actually made me sad to uh, um, to cut it because it has been so useful for this project but I cut a slit in it so that it has room to flex in and out although I did weld it, so I don't know. But I don't think it's going to go in real deep, and I should be able to to get it out. And then um, I drilled a hole in the center-ish for the punch. So I can now put this onto the other race and pound it in. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, also, I had all of the... Little baby washers that uh, were behind the race. So I used the new kit. Um, I used all but one and uh, used a um, 
don't think it's called a micrometer, but, um, and basically use the same size. So I have a place to start. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put in this race in, and then uh, the other one's smaller, so I should be able to use that kit. Okay, so um, I've inserted the races. There's not a lot of room under there, nor is it uh, anything that's fun to watch. Um, so those are in, and then I cleaned it out and um, checked the fitment of this top bearing, you know, at the end. Everything looks good. I have uh, um, spacers on this side. This should match what was there originally. Um, I was doing some research and apparently this is a dam that goes in here. I don't know what that means at this point because I didn't have one on the original. So I'm guessing older Dana 60s didn't have that dam. Um, I don't know if that's good, bad, or indifferent, but I already have this pressed on. So I'm going to see uh, what kind of a rating I have if, if, uh, if the, you know, as I tighten everything up, if I don't get 15 to, what is it, 15 to 25 or 15 to 30 or something, I'll look that up, but uh, of rotational resistance when I turn the yoke on the front of the differential, I need to make sure that there's a good uh, press. That's the big thing on that, you know, causes you to have to redo everything. So uh, uh, I'm going to put this in, put the yoke on, not going to put the seal on, and put everything back together and just see what it comes up with, uh, see what I come up with and uh, kind of take it from there. If, if I have to make changes, then I may have to take this off, especially if it's, what is it, if it's too loose, then that spacer may come into, or that dam may come into play. But um, I'm just going to see what I got. And take it one step at a time. I think this is the pain part of uh, doing this kind of job, but we'll see. I mean, I, I don't, I'm assuming the dam is to kind of keep fluid in to keep these bearings lubricated, maybe like a, an upgrade. I don't know if the cases are different, why, why they would have started adding that. Uh, but I didn't have problems with the old bearings and those things, what, 50 years old, something like that. Um, so, uh, it can't be too critical, but if I end up with the possibility of having to uh, bring this in, bring it that way, then uh, I'll consider putting that in. And then, because I really don't want to mess with pressing this bearing off uh, and potentially screw up the bearing, it might be easier just to buy a new bearing and then cut it again, which would be kind of sad. So anyway, rambling on, uh, let's see what happens. All right, so I tried to use just a regular wrench and a cheater bar and uh, tried to tighten the yoke while in the differential all the way down. And I went until I couldn't go anymore and then uh, took it out and like looked at the splines on this one just to see where it grooved and it wasn't all the way down. So I'm like, okay. So I started Googling stuff and, you know, I think, you know, these, this one has a little more tapered, um, uh, gear spline on it than the, the new one. So I took some needle bearings and kind of cleaned them up a little bit. Just, just took a little off the edge. Um, something like this where I can just get in and, and just kind of get the corner. And then uh, I cleaned out the inside because my socket kept getting stuck in there. That was that was a pain. And I also, uh, I don't know where it is, but um, I ground the edge of the, here it is, of the socket because it was, it was just getting stuck in there. And I couldn't tell if my socket was getting stuck that was causing the problem. So that's all been corrected. <sighs> Now I'm ready to try it again, 
and I want to make sure that I have all the information needed. So I took a socket, put it over here, you know, just kind of did one of these numbers, put it in my press, and I pushed it all the way down. So, you know, if, if, if it needs more than, it's what, uh, 190 or 200 foot-pounds of torque to for this nut. So uh, I'm pretty sure my press is doing that, um, or at least put, putting it all the way down. So then I took my, I think it's a micrometer, and now I know uh, I have this locked down. So now I know that when I'm underneath the car, truck, I can, and this is all the way down, I'd have to take the nut off again, but I got an air uh, wrench for that, air hammer or wrench, whatever, uh, impact. So now I'm ready to put it back in. Uh, well, I have to pull this off again, use my gear puller that I did for all my bearings. And uh, pull this off, put it back in, make sure my shims are in there, and um, see what I get. All right, so I use the impact wrench, tighten it all the way in. Um, trying to use this headlight. Made sure that it's all the way down. You know, so it's all the way in and it was too tight. I could barely move it with my hand. I know that's not gonna work, so I'm gonna pull it. And But I'm close, I believe. One more shim on this side of the bearing, and uh, I'm hopeful that uh, that's gonna put me within range. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get my puller, I take this off again, and hopefully just do this one more time. All right. <sighs> so after taking this off 13 million times, trying different combinations, I got it rotating and it rotates within the resistance of 10 to 20, what inch pounds is that is? I think that's inch pounds. So take this off for the last time, install the seal, put it all back together. Okay, here's an update. I'm screwed. Um, I wanted to get it done this weekend, but um, so when I tried to put the center section on, I could not get it in. You know, I, I measured each, I had right side and left or the gear side or the opposite side shims all separated and, uh, used a micrometer, measured them out, used the new shims that matched, thought I'd be good, but, um, there is something wrong here, uh, or different. I won't say wrong, but. I couldn't get the center section to go in. It was tight before, but now I, you know, I was, where's the micrometer? I was 10 thousandths off, um, which I mean, isn't a huge amount, but it is a huge amount when we're talking about this. So, um, I was trying to get lucky and I was taking this side off because this side is really hard to get off and still save the bearing. So I um, was tapping on this side and of course every time I was chiseling this off I was ruining these shims and so I started using what I had left over and started bringing the math down each time, writing down what I had. I did it three times, I think, maybe four. And now it fits in great, and it rotates great, but the pinion is, um, there's, no, there's no play. There's no, I know there's supposed to be some, you know, some play between this so that, you know, they're not fighting against each other. And when I tighten it down, I can't. Uh, even rotate this assembly. So I know I have got to remove some shims off of this side. And uh, if I do that, I'm going to mess up the bearing, mess up the shims. I have no more shims. You know, I, I basically could, I need to get one of those tools that clamp on and then allow you to take it off. Um, I mean, the, the bearings aren't that expensive. It's not like it's, I don't know. 
Um, but either way, I'm kind of done for now. I, I've got to take a step back and recuperate from this. Um, yeah, I got to get some new shims and keep track of this and kind of get it to move over. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to buy the tool. I know like Justin probably has one. I believe he has one, but, um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm probably going to do another one of these. So, um, anywho, uh, so that's where I am stopping for now and I'm going to order some parts, probably some new bearings and new shims for the center section and re, you know start another day so we'll keep going okay so it is a new day um it's been a few days actually uh so i went and purchased off of amazon one of those it said it was a dana 60 um bearing puller because i am literally with that punch method i am destroying um bearings so i bought this you know where it kind of clamps on and then you put a cover over on it and you bolt down and it pulls the thing out so i'll show a video of that or a clip of that in here so i was able to get the bearing off and get the shims out without damaging them which is what stopped me because using that punch method you know a i couldn't get on this side because there's just no ag there's no angle to it right so i know when everything was tightened down this was to put too much pressure on the pinion so my goal is to i've i've measured i think it's 50 thousandths of was the shims that i had in the on this side and so I want to pull it away from the pinion a little bit so I'm gonna maybe take ten thousandths off of here add it to this side so that it's basically going to move the ring over ten thousandths you know I'm just winging it I don't know I mean I'm just kind of using how the shims impact things and, and stuff like that so I'm going to give that a shot and uh, see what happens. Okay, so here's what I did. The original gear side was a 60, roughly 60 to 62. So I'm bringing that down to 50. I'm taking those 10 thousandths. This side, by the time I got done trying to get it to fit in the, ca in the case, in the differential, I had brought this down to like 35, so I'm bringing that back up to a 45. So, let's see if this fits. Wouldn't that be great if it did the first time around? Well, fourth time around, third time. Anyway. Okay. So, I got the carrier to slide in. I'm happy with the, with the preload. I mean, it's not easy to get in, but if it's lined up just right... And you push in all the right places, it kind of squishes in. But if you, well, I guess there's a little, itty bit. Sorry for breathing heavy. I'm a fat person trying to put this in by myself. When I first spun it, Felt like there was no play. Uh, I guess I should tighten it down too. Let me tighten it down. All right, so when I tighten it down, I can't move it. So it's still, it is still too tight. So maybe another 10 thousandth, because I should have, I believe, between a five and 10 thousandths play between the pinion, you know, the, the play between the ring and the pinion, so. Okay, dismantle, and I'm going to take another 10,000 so. So, I just got to thinking, what if the reason why it's not spinning when it's tightened down is there's too much preload? So, in theory, if I were to bring this side down like a 5,000th, 
then I would be 45 and 45. And let's just see what that does. Because, you know, to do that, all I have to do is take off one side. I don't have to touch the other side. So let's see what happens. All right. So pull the bearing back off. Put on, I don't know if you can read it, but it's 45. So I'm going five thousandths less on the gear side. And that should give me a little more play. And hopefully um, they won't freeze up when I put the caps on. Let's find out. Well, once again, this thing's fighting me. Um, if I if I tighten these down, I still can't spin it. So I'm obviously st still too tight. And I think that movement is the gap between. I had to loosen these up. Because when I tighten it down, or even bring it up just a skosh, uh, there's still no play between the pinions. So she's still got to go that way. Okay, I am still going. Bring it in. I brought it another ten thousandths in. And it's starting to move a lot easier. You know, like it's getting close to not binding. So maybe one more. I don't know. I'm going to take a break and charge my impact wrench because she tired. All right. So I think uh, I got the caps tightened down. I think I'm at a point. I hear some movement, so I'm going to take a measurement and see what I got. Thank God. All right, so I have my gauges set up, and you can see it's pretty close to zero. Maybe there. And then when I move it, I'm going probably four, no, three. So I am super close. Um, so I'm going to give it a little more. Um, I'm going to bring out some of the smaller shims and just kind of make uh, smaller adjust adjustments. All right. So after messing with this forever, I think I'm in a good place. Um, so... I ended up swapping out the bearings. Um, I must have taken those previous bearings off 20 times. And uh, with the first part using the chisel, I kind of marred up a couple of them. It, it felt okay, but I was reading online where they're, they're saying to go with Timken bearings. That it won't, as long as you go that route, you'll be fine. So I had purchased some, and I'm like, all right, I'm just going to wait until the end. I'll get it all shimmed out uh, with these old bearings. And then when I start getting close, or when I think I got it, I'm going to put in the Timken bearings. So right now, I do have the Timken bearings in. I've been playing around with the play, and I'm pretty much just at five thousandths which I believe is the uh, minimum threshold. Um, and I've been spinning around, that's the closest one. I think I'm gonna leave it there and just uh, go with that. I feel good, I feel good with everything in there. It spins nice. Um, I, I did have to add some more shims on this side to get some bearing preload. It was difficult to get in and you kinda had to push it a little bit, but not use a hammer or anything so I don't know I've seen a couple of videos where they say you're supposed to hammer it in but um, I mean there's no play on any of this so I'm gonna check to see what the uh, wear pattern looks like and if it looks, looks good then I'm just gonna go with it so I'm gonna torque these down and I'm actually gonna oh, thank God move forward with this this has been Quite a challenge for my little brain. Anyway, moving on. All right, so there is the pattern. I think you can see down here. I mean, that's, to me, that's good. That one seems a, a little far back, but it's also forward. So uh, let me know. Tell me what you think on those. I'm going to spin it the other way.
All right, and there is the bottom side or the convex side. I don't know. I like that right there. So I'm calling this good. I'm going to go ahead and clean the outside, which I should have done already. And uh, But let me know if uh, you think this wear pattern is bad. Let me know. Put it in the comments. All right, so hopefully this is the last day on this. It is a Saturday, so I should have plenty of time and not too many steps. So I got the ring and pinion where I want it. I need to torque down the cap bolts to 85 to 90 foot-pounds. And last night I'm like, well, I should uh, at least try to clean this up kind of like I've done with this truck. So uh, I wire brushed it and then put some POR 15 on it. And so at least when I look at it, I'll remember this, all this fun. So let's get at it. All right. So pan is installed, torqued down, um, service manual said 45 foot pounds. So that's what I did. Uh, next I'm going to put the axles back in because this is open. There's no seal and, uh, this differential oil. I believe lubes the bearings. So before I put any fluid in it, I'm gonna put the axles back on and put the wheels back on. Why not? It's time to drive. Okay, so wheels are on, axles are in, pans on, and I have to say this is like the easiest uh, differential to put fluid in. Uh, I can literally see the fuel, the oil level. So. It's not like I put too much in and it's spewed on out. So I'm going to go ahead and put a cap, drop the tires, and take her for a test run. All right. I don't know if you can hear me or not. It's super loud in here going on the highway speeds. But uh, things are going good. Uh, it, uh, speedometer is five miles an hour off. That's to be expected when you change the gears. You would have to change the gear on the speedometer. But, so I'm doing probably, it says 60, so I'm doing about 65 miles an hour. And I'm just over 2,500 RPMs. And I'm keeping up with traffic. So I think this setup will work. Uh, I need to drive it some more, but you know, it's a nice day today. We've got the weekend, so it's a good day. Uh, I'm gonna put some more miles on it. There is a slight vibration at 50 miles an hour that I'm trying to figure out if it was there before or if this is something new. The truck hasn't driven in a while. I mean, there's a lot of factors, that, and let's be honest, this thing's all over the place anyway. So. I'm going to end it there. Thank you guys for watching and uh, have a good one.